Hey, what's up, guys? This is Sohan, and you are watching Technical Spark. Friends, this would be our last video in Trellix CFRP series, and today I'm going to demonstrate user local keys options. Okay, what are the options we are getting uh, when any user wants to create, you know, their uh, keys on the local machine instead of EPO assigned as well as little bit on the queries and report as well as the dashboard so all the things we are going to cover in this particular video and after this there won't be any new video on this series and i really hope that all you guys have enjoyed my entire series and you know loaded with a lots of knowledge so without further ado as always let's stick to the point and start the video after this small intro <laughs> Welcome back guys. Now let me launch my EPO console and here I'll just log in with my admin credential which has the privilege to change the policy or edit the policy. And here is my machine, test machine that is the T1 and the policy which we are going to learn is user local keys option because this is the only policy which is remain and rest of the policies we have already covered in my previous videos. So let's open that. And as you could see, by default, it's not enabled. Okay, so we'll enable this and we'll set the recovery key as a Sohanji. Okay, because this is what our if you want to you know do it for the group, then you can choose any of the standard key which you have configured. So and these things I have already covered in my I guess second or third video. So if you want more knowledge on the key creation and use uh, usage, go back and check out those videos. Okay, so there are a few options like allow user key generation. So if you enable this, then a user can generate their key on you know YAPRP agent manually. These options will give the you know ability where user can export the keys. Okay, as because as you know that since the keys are generated on the local machine, those keys are not backed up by the EPO server. So if in case if there's anything goes wrong with the system, then you you know user formatted the machine or something like that you know happens, then user will not be able to recover the data which is encrypted by the local keys. So make sure this option is enabled, as well as the third option, allow import of user local keys so that you know user can export and import keys as and when required. As well as if user uh, any key is created by the user and if he decided to okay delete that, then this key you know option will also help you to you know uh, reduce the noise. For now, we will not allow user to automatically create a local key. Uh, but yeah, but if you have any specific you know, requirement, then yeah, you can enable this option. So let's save this policy, which will be applied to my this T1 machine, and now we'll jump to our test machine T1. Here we go guys, this is my test machine. Let me very first open agent status monitor and the second window would be my FRP agent. Guys, the policy which I am discussing, okay, this is completely, you know, uh, depend on this particular option. Right now, if I click on any of the option, it doesn't work, right? Because it's not active, it's grayed out. So, so whatever the changes we have make, if you want to take all the changes to be in place, we have to sync the policy. But before that, okay, so here is my file explorer. Here, let's go to the this PC and then, okay, let's choose the picture folder. New and then let's say text document. Test file, okay. Let me open and write something into it. Save and then if I right click right now, go to the show more options, then FRP encrypt. See, I don't have much options here, right? Now, guys, uh, okay, uh, let me just synchronize the policy. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, no. all the options has been enabled, right, guys? So that's how basically the policy work. When you enable the change, you know, those options into the your EPO console, these things get created. Now here you have the you know option where you can create new key, right? By clicking the next, or let's say C drive, I would like to create a key. Uh, password protector. If you have certificate, yeah, you can then choose the certificate option. 
the next let's enter one of the password okay now click on next enter the name of your key like it could be oh, FRP agent local timeout settings if you want you can decide or I'll just select here as infinite which means it will be permanent next guys here it will give you the, uh, the sequence how exactly the things going to be work so very much it will create key store into the C drive protect key store using the password which we have provided the generate encrypted key set key name to the FRP agent local set key timeout settings and uh, where exactly it's going to store the keys so this is the steps now click on next all are checked and it has created the key successfully let's click on finish now if I go to the my okay, very first since we have already created the key let me just uh, refresh here right click show more option encrypt and if I check into the my system you could see the FRP agent local that key is uh, available now right so that's how you can you know use these options or keys to encrypt your data now it's asking me to enter the password let me enter one random password okay again okay so it's not as, as i know accepting the random password which means we have to enter the password which we have set while creating the key so let me enter that perfect so it's accepted the password which means you will have to you know mention the password which you have mentioned while creating the key otherwise your data will not be encrypted so store that password very carefully okay guys so hopefully now you have understood how exactly the key works now if you want to delete those local keys you can use this option and select the keys and you can do the deletion of option as well as if you want to rename the key yeah you can again Go next and rename the key which you would like to you know save. Yeah, if you want, you can export the key which you have configured. Okay. Then similar way you can ex import the exported keys. Okay. Now next is recover keys. You can set the keys which you have you know uh, as option. You can use the you know this particular option. So hopefully I have covered almost everything. Now we'll go back to EPO server and I'll show you where is the report as well as the dashboard. Welcome back guys. Now let's go to the dashboard very first. And then as you could see, we have tip by default only two dashboards. One is FRP cloud provider dashboard, which we you know did not use because the other things we have done is there is in the local shared folder, local network. So yeah. But if you have the cloud applications where you have, you know, performed location based encryption, then yeah, this data will be failed. But right now we just go, we are just going to the FRP executive. And as you could see, Hypo, this is the, you know, installed version used by operating system. So this particular, that is doesn't show much data. It's just because uh, it has the time frame. Okay, let me show you one of these. So you will get the more idea. This introduces and the series i'm running from quite long time so that's the reason this data is not available but if you are using day to day then yeah it would be definitely available the data in this particular dashboards okay so we just one dashboard is popped up and a rest of the empty so let me just copy one of the dashboard name and i'll show you why exactly it's not showing the data here so removal media recent just has been copied now let's go to the apo and here will search for that particular data yeah here it is now what i'll do i'll just duplicate this so it will be able to use you know in effective way for this let me create new group with the name frp and let's save this private groups frp here we go let's click on edit what it says let's check next and then next so he just keeping the data of one week so here i'll just select here instead of week month and here i'll mention two months click on save save 
run. Now it's showing the data. You got it guys? But similar way, if I go to the Trace default report, here is the default query and this is my custom query. But if I run the default query, then it doesn't have any data. But in our custom query, it has the data. Okay? So this is how you know you can fine tune the uh, queries and reports and make your data more accurate. Okay guys. Now let me just click on duplicate. So that I'll be able to demonstrate in better way. So this is my copy and what I'll do. I'll just select here edit monitor and in this we'll choose the our recent users data which we have yeah this one and click on ok yeah we got the data so that's how you can you know uh, modify your dashboard or you can utilize the dashboard so that you don't have to go into the uh, queries and report every time as soon as you log in and select your appropriate dashboard you will be able to view all the data which is required so you can customize the things based on your need it could be frp or you can uh, you know combine multiple product dashboard in the single screen okay you can add multiple screen guys you have the options just drag and drop and it will go one by one so that's it and with this good note hopefully you have all enjoyed and uh, I'll just end this series here and guys uh, one more thing I would like to uh, inform you that so far I have observed that I'm not getting much response on the technical videos which I'm posting so I'm just planning if I didn't get my good response in the next series which is that would be our telex endpoint security then I'm thinking to drop my this entire technical series and start something new which will be not related to security products so what i need is your response if you want to learn with me yeah, you will have to be interactive that's it nothing else i'm asking so thank you so much for watching this video this is sohan signing out i'll catch you in the next video till then bye bye